Welcome to MSP Voice, the weekly show for MSPs by MSPs. Brought to you by CloudBerry, the number one cross-platform cloud backup. Learn more at cloudberrylab.com. This is MSP Voice. Hello and welcome to MSP Voice. This is episode number 440. That's uh, quite a few. We're, we're getting close to the, uh, to the one year mark here at MSP Voice. Um, Great interview today with Tim Taylor from TaylorWorks. Uh, he's also with Tim Taylor Consulting Group. Uh, it, the interview went a little long, but I think it's worth it because uh, Tim has, has a lot of great info that, that, he, that he gives us. Um, he's got some great stories. So I'm not doing a best of Reddit this week. Uh, so, but just know that the interview is really good and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, I am going to do my housekeeping. So mspvoice.com is your source for all things MSP Voice. Um, some new content that's uh, been up there since last week. Um, we do have another webinar coming up um, on March 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's with Venator um, and Piers Mummery. Uh, met him um, actually a couple of weeks ago at the Robin Robbins um, boot camp thing. Um, great guy. He's going to talk about kind of getting back to basics uh, for your MSP uh, to help you grow your business. Um, also on here is we have the replay for um, IT Rockstars, that webinar, uh, with Scott Miller. So that was, that was a good one. We did on February 26th. So check that out. He gives some great tips um, on how to use LinkedIn and some other social media. Uh, and then also um, a new kind of guest post, something we're trying out here. Um, so we, we're talking this week with, uh, or this is Nathan R., who works at an MSP. So essentially like a help desk technician. Um, and just kind of talks about some experiences there. So kind of some interesting content that we've got going on now on mspvoice.com. Um, I will have the recording from last week's webinar with Carrie Simpson of Managed Sales Pros. I'll have that up uh, this week as well. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, but again, um, just a, a, a quick update this week because the interview with Tim, um, I think it's really good. Uh, check out the show notes. I've got links to uh, his book that he's written as well as his consulting group if you're interested in, in contacting him for that. Uh, but, but really, you know, 20 years of experience in this industry, starting out from the trunk of his car. Um, so have a listen. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did talking to Tim. All right. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Hello and welcome. Today I am joined by Tim Taylor, um, who runs um, Tim Taylor Consulting Group, but also owns an MSP called TaylorWorks in the Orlando area. Um, Tim, why don't you just give us a brief introduction, who you are and what, you, what you're up to? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on today. Um, yeah, I own an MSP just outside of Orlando, Florida called TaylorWorks. We are in our mm -hmm. 20th year this year. I started out of the trunk of my car in 1999 by myself, <laughs> like as many of you have done or are still doing. And mm -hmm. um, I basically just realized at that time that if you were, were honest with people and you did what you said you were going to do and charge a fair price, you could get all the business that you wanted. And so we grew okay. dramatically. Uh, by 2006, we'd opened our, our own office. and we had, I had about eight staff. Uh, we were doing over a million dollars a year in business. And today we've got about, about 14 staff and we're over $2 million a year in business. So Awesome. Uh, That's great. Yeah. And one of the things that um, – I found early on was there just wasn't a lot of good information about starting and running your own MSP. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll get into that later, but uh, I, I took some steps to remedy that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the goals of the podcast is just to, you know, talk to business owners like yourself who, who have become successful and just, you know, yeah. Hey, if you've got any tips, tricks and those types of things for, yeah. for others out there in the industry is, uh, sure. you know, let, let, let's let them you know, When it. I started so, in 99, I looked for a book, how to start and run a successful IT company. I mean, somebody had to yep. And I looked for it, and I couldn't <laughs> find it anywhere. I mean, I looked everywhere for it. Now, the 99 was the early days of the Internet, obviously, but I looked mm -hmm. at bookstores, and I looked online. And um, I finally found a book about running, starting a computer store, and that was about all I found. Oh, okay. and so, yeah. um, you know, I went ahead and just started my practice anyway and started cranking away and, you know, making mistakes. I learned how to do this thing. And then uh, one day I ran into a guy, and I said, what do you do? And he goes, I help people write books. And I said, you know what? I'm always going to write a book about this industry because mm -hmm. basically no one had written it at that time. And that was around 2010. And uh, okay. the idea just started germinating, and he and I met for a while and basically came up with an uh, outline for the book. And then I basically wrote it, and he helped me edit it. And so today okay. I've got, you know, how to start and run a successful IT company. It's up on Amazon. and. Awesome. Uh, and I found a need. People were writing me after buying the book. Um, 
uh, for consulting. And so basically I started Tim Taylor Consulting Group and okay. I help MSPs, a lot of times struggling MSPs or guys just getting mm -hmm. started. Those are the guys I really like to help because I can really help you because I've done exactly what you're trying to do. I've made every mistake you can make in this business. So please learn from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll definitely, definitely include a link to your book um, in, in the show notes. So that way people are interested. They can, uh, they can click it and, uh, yeah. and have a read. Yeah, so, absolutely. If you want to click on my uh, Tim Taylor Consulting Group website, just reach out to me. And if you're interested, I'll, I'll have a free call. And I'll talk to you about what I offer and, and help you get your MSP off the ground. So, Okay. So, you know, back in 99, when you decided that you were going to start doing this, what was, I guess, what kind of led you down that road? Was it well, friends and question. family? Or? Yeah, I'd always, <laughs> that's a great question. I'd always done, I'd always been in IT. Okay. I started mm -hmm. as a mainframe programmer. Uh, back when I was in college, mainframes were mm -hmm. the thing. And yep. it was invented basically the year I graduated from college. But there were a lot of PCs. Uh, they weren't Microsoft PCs. They were out on the yeah. market before the Microsoft PC came out. And I did some programming work mm -hmm. on those, you know, written in Pascal and some other languages, yep. some COBOL on the mainframe. And then um, I went to work for a big nonprofit. We're not a college. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee originally, and I moved to California. Okay. And I came there in there as a mainframe programmer. So writing in COBOL, it was a big organization, you know, 12,000 employees across 160 mm -hmm. countries and we were the main headquarters. So I was writing software on the mainframe and then the president's office wanted a PC. Well, I knew a little bit about them. So I raised my hand. I said, I, I can do that. And so then another office wanted one, then another office wanted one. And this was right. about 1985. And, yeah. uh, and then we figured out uh, we better start networking these things together so we can share these expensive HP laser printers that printed four pages a minute and cost $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> so we started building Novell Networks with no formal training. Mm -hmm. We just had to figure it out on our own. We started building Novell Networks, and eventually we connected over 400 machines with many Novell mm -hmm. servers around our whole headquarters. And yeah. uh, so I became a networking guy. My, my, my programming career kind of evaporated. And eventually we decided to downsize off our mainframe, and we completely started running everything on, you know, on on uh, micro networks and uh, with, with servers. And so um, i worked with them for 13 years and I felt like, you know, I kind of put my time in as a nonprofit, it was a nonprofit. So the salaries are very low. I had my third child. I had okay. three children. I had a mortgage and two car payments <laughs> and I was 40 years old. That tells you how old I am now. That was a night. <laughs> I said, you know what? By God, I'm tired of working for other people. I worked for a small IT company for a year and mm -hmm. it was the worst year of my life. The guy was, he promised me the world, never paid me hardly anything. And I was bringing in all the business and he was constantly yeah. telling me I was doing a bad job. So I said, you know what? I can do this myself. So I started with one customer out of the trunk of my car. And I said, I'm either going to survive. I'm either going to make it or die trying. <laughs> and I think when you have that level of commitment, that's when you make it. But if you don't have that yeah. level of commitment, you probably shouldn't even try. Honestly. Yeah. And um, I just jumped out there and I would do anything by the hour. I would do anything. By, you know, I, I did home computers. I did basically anything I was asked. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been, I pretty quickly got out of home computers and got into just business networks. And I, okay. I started this one place in one building and I went to the law firm next door and got their business and just started expanding, expanding, expanding. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's where we are today. So. Okay, great. So now I'm guessing, you know, you said you would do anything for, you know, like, you know, for an hour for billable work. So did yeah. you really consider yourself break fix then? And, and what was the transition like for you yeah. to kind of go That's from great. that break fix model to managed? Yeah. You ask, you ask good questions. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's I do what you do. Um, well, you know, in 1999, who, who heard of managed services? There's no such thing as managed. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was basically working by the hour. I started out at $65 an hour. You know, that was a, an average rate people were charging back then. And mm -hmm. I got a lot of business, you know, I was doing billable, billable time. And, and that was all fun. And then I hired two or three guys and billable time there. And it was just money was rolling in. I hardly had any overhead. But I was doing yeah. this work at this one really big church. And they had about 50 or 60 machines. And I would go in there. Some, I remember I had a, like a $9,000 bill over like a six-week period. And they said, listen, we can't afford this anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. and so I said, well, look, you've got about 50 machines. What if I charge you a hundred dollars a machine a month and I'll just do everything. I won't charge you by the hour anymore. I'll be, and that was my first managed, I, I came up top of my head. That's my first managed <laughs> service client. Okay. Yeah. So I, I started doing that. And then um, I started seeing that the world was moving in that direction. And mm -hmm. around 2008, um, we were like, okay, we really got to look into this. And we, we started contacting, um, 
you know, PSAs and we, we started using ConnectWise at that point. Mm -hmm. They're just like an hour and a half from our office here in Orlando yep. or over in Tampa. And so we started using ConnectWise and oh, it was a hard transition though. It was so difficult <laughs> because starting to do tickets and starting to, you know, bill clients that way and, and, and do the billing through ConnectWise instead of just going mm -hmm. into QuickBooks and typing in an invoice, you know, yeah. our old system was so simple, but with, we had no passive income. If I didn't have my guys out there on site doing billable time, mm -hmm. there was absolutely no passive income. So there was no way yeah. we could have grown to the size we are today and with the income we had today without doing managed services. So it's definitely was a good move. It was not an easy transition, but we, we pulled it off and you know, it is the way to go. Okay. No, definitely. You know, because of you know, so many, like so many MSPs that I talk to, they're either they've they've done the transition or they might be in that transition of trying to get from that you're break fix into get, the managed. You're never going to get it completely away from doing some break fix work. That's just the yeah. way you're you're going to be asked to do it. You you can go into a business and do a little bit of break fix to prove you know what you're doing. But mm -hmm. I still don't I don't still don't recommend people do that because. Um, they're just better ways of selling managed services than doing that because they're always going to keep trying to get you to do break fix work. And, exactly. uh, you know, selling managed services is one of my specialties. You know, I wrote a whole chapter in my book about just specifically selling managed services and it's really kind of an art form, but you mm -hmm. can definitely do it. But with, with, you know, with charging your customers a flat rate per machine um, and basically saying, look, we're going to cover all these items for you. And we're basically giving you unlimited support. They love the word unlimited support for this number. Yeah. Unlimited supports what scares the crap out of a break fix guy. Okay. <laughs> I, talk to, I talk to him all the time. Okay. And you think, Oh, I'm there. You're going to have all these problems. I'm going to go in there and spend 75 hours cleaning them up. And I'm, I'm only going to be able to charge them my, my managed service rate. Well, if you maintain their network correctly and you did everything you're supposed to do, you're never going to have a situation like that. Okay. Yeah. I, I will tell you in the 10 more years that we've been doing managed services, there's only been a couple of times where I feel like we exceeded in hours and labor, what we were charging them that month. Okay? okay. So those issues will come up, but it's not like they're going to come up that often. And especially if you're doing the preventive maintenance that you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. they're not going to have all those big issues. So yeah. that's really one of the secrets to providing managed services and, and getting billed, doing your billing and getting paid what you need to get paid is doing the preventive okay. maintenance, doing it right. Yeah. Well, even, even if you do have that one month where maybe you've spent a lot of time there, you know, yeah. it should average out in the other months, you know, if, you, if you got Absolutely. your rate set right. So, you know, when we come in and, you know, say you have 25 user network, okay. It's a real, real common scenario. You come in somebody that got 25 user network, they've been paying a break fix guy who works out of his car and I'm not cutting that down. I started there, maybe it's going to work that way. I'm not cutting that down, but you know, he's been, he was across town last month and they had a breakdown and they couldn't get him over. That's when they pick mm -hmm. up the call, pick up the phone and start calling MSPs, okay? So yeah. you walk in there and you say, listen, you know, I'm gonna maintain your network. We're gonna put a piece of software on every computer that maintains mm -hmm. it in real time. It's also gonna notify us if there's a problem with one of your machines. It can open a ticket in our system automatically. We don't have to wait for you to call us. We'll know about things before they happen. We know about a server going down. We know about your backup not working. We know about okay. antiviruses attacking your machines. We're going to know about these things, okay? And suddenly that gets their attention. They're like, wow, you know, you can do, you can find all that stuff out? Yes. And we're going to do a lot of preventive maintenance to keep you from having all these issues, mm -hmm. okay? And we're going to do it for a flat rate. We know what it takes to support a network of this size, and we're going to do it for you at a flat rate. And get them to talk about their pain. What are some of the problems that you've had dealing with the guy? When you first get in there, have them talk about yeah. all the reasons that they're calling you in. <laughs> talk about the pain, 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 pain. And say, well, I've got a solution for that. I've got a program here that we can put you in. It's, it's very successful. We help, help many other people. I can give you their mm -hmm. names and numbers if you want to talk to some of them. And we've been doing it for a long time. And it's called managed services. And this is what we do for you. And I say, listen, it, it flips the equation. When you, when you have a guy you're paying break fix, unfortunately, I mean, or fortunately for him, he actually makes more money the more problems you have, if you think about it. He doesn't necessarily yeah. want you to have the problems, but mm -hmm. the more hours he's out here, the more he gets paid. With mm -hmm. managed services, I actually get paid more the less problems that you have. So what do you think yeah. I'm motivated for? I'm motivated yeah. your network to run perfectly because every time I have to send somebody out here, it actually costs me time and money. And so mm -hmm. I want your network to run so well that you don't have to call me that much. And when you do call, we will have software on every machine. We can remote connect immediately. In fact, we only have to come out if we can't fix it remotely. But mm -hmm. if we can't fix it remotely, we dispatch somebody out here. So there's really no risk on your part. 
Yeah, yeah. but your managed service contract is more than I was paying my break fix guy. I said, yes, but why are you talking to me? Because you're tired of break fix. You're tired yeah. of not working. And you're getting a higher level of service from us. And we're going to maintain all of your machines so you don't have a lot of problems. And that's where your money is spent is when you have an unproductive employee who can't work on their computer because it's down. Yeah. We're going to keep exactly. it happening. And, um, you know, then you charge them an onboarding fee. I always charge them. I just double the monthly rate. Uh, the, mm -hmm. you know, it's 20, let's say it's 20, say an average number of hundred dollars a machine say it's $2,500 for your managed services monthly. And we charge two months up front. Okay. And that's okay. Your onboarding fee. Okay. So, yeah. um, again, once you set the network up right and keep it cleaned up, um, you're not, they're not going to have a lot of issues and they're going to have some, yeah. Yeah. but they're not going to have so much that you're going to lose money. So, you know, and, and another thing too, you know, that's, you know, a lot of MSPs talk about is VCIO services or, right. or, or CIO services. Right. Now, is that something that, that, that you automatically put all your customers on as well? Yes. Now, now when you're a little smaller and you're just getting started with managed services, it's a little bit harder. It's not hard to do, but it, it can seem a yeah. little hard because one more task you have to do. Here, here's the main thing. <laughs> What you want to do with your clients is get, it's hard to do it on the screen, but you want to get up to here with your clients. Okay. You want, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean by that? You want yeah. to know everything there is to know about their business. Okay. You mm -hmm. want to come in there and, and talk to them about what do you guys struggle with? What, what are, what are things, not technically. Okay. But what do you struggle with in business? Is it competition? Is it this? Is it that? And even if you can't solve those problems for them, they appreciate the fact that you care about their business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me give you an example of a business that we really helped. Okay. One of our clients, um, <laughs> it's so funny how things work. We had uh, <laughs> someone call us this old kind of rundown church that's downtown Orlando. And they said, can you come okay. out? You know? So I'll go out there and I start looking at their network and I go into the library. This is a funny story. I go to the library. This is little old lady is working in the library, you know, little old church lady. You know, she's working in the mm -hmm. library. She's very sweet and everything. I talked to her a little bit and, and um, helped her with the computer. Then about two weeks later, I get this phone call. Or no, I get an email and it was from her. And she said, uh, we're having some, you know, like spam problems. This was a number of years ago on our, on our, on our email. Can you guys do anything about that? And we had a Barracuda spam filter. And mm -hmm. um, I noticed her return address was this huge H heating and air conditioning company that's here in Orlando. <laughs> Well, I kind of found out she is the operations manager at this huge HVAC company right here in town. <laughs> this little old lady that volunteered yeah. in the library. Okay. <laughs> so I go over there and um, I've been trying to get in this place, but you couldn't even get mm -hmm. past the gatekeeper, you know? So yeah. she brings me in and they have this like 50 user network and they're overloading the software that they're running. It's a big HVAC, you know, heating and air conditioning company. And they're getting so yeah. many phone calls because this is Florida. It's always hot. The air conditioning company. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they're getting literally overloaded with phone calls. every day. They can't even put the tickets in their system fast enough. It was crashing the system. Okay. And so I came in and we ended up over, then building their trust with me over, you know, say a year or so, we ended up taking mm -hmm. over their network and she eventually retired, really sweet lady. She ended up retiring and, and turned it over to another lady that manages the office. But um, I, I kept saying, we have to replace the software you guys are running here. This is just your, yeah. skill. and the software company kept blaming the network and we were telling them, no, it's the software. And yeah. uh, we got another HVC company that ran a much better software package and I, I had them sit through a demo of it and they ended up converting to it. And we started supporting them around 2008 and they have tripled in revenue since 2008 wow. and they have not tripled in size. Okay. Yeah. It is a no small part to the fact that they're now running a software package that actually works. Their email is mm -hmm. all good. Everything in there works. And we make sure it's over 120 machines and we're almost never have to be on site because we've set everything up correctly and it works mm -hmm. really, really well. So, the VCIO service really just means get in there with your customers, figure out what they need, figure out how you can help them. And then selling the new things is just, is, is so simple. Okay. Yeah. They think that you're coming there for a VCIO meeting and all you want to do is just sell them something. They're going to fight you <laughs> to have those meetings. Yeah. But if they think you really care about their business and you're coming there to meet with them about business challenges they have, then um, they're going to take your meetings. So you need those relationships with your customers. And it either needs to be you or it needs to be, um, you know, one of your employees that you really trust. And we're, we're big enough now where I have a dedicated VCIO person. Okay. And that's what they do is they develop those okay. with their clients. But normally it's the owner of the business, especially in a smaller business. Yeah. 
So that's a long cool. answer to a short question, but no, yeah. no, 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 it's great. Um, one other, one other question I have, cause you, you kind of brought it up, you know, that, you know, someone's working with a break fix guy, they get, uh, you know, they get frustrated with the break fix guy. So right. then they call you, right? How do they find you? How do you advertise? What's your, that's a good question. you know, um, well, you know, we have a, we have a good website. Okay. And, mm -hmm. uh, been through many iterations of our website over the years. What we ended up doing was finding a company that only does websites for MSPs. So if okay. you go to Taylor, if you go to taylorworks.com, mm -hmm. that's my MSP site, taylorworks.com, you can see the name of the company at the bottom if you want to contact them. But you want a decent website. It's a website that, especially if you're small, it doesn't make you look small. Okay. Yeah. When you have a decent website, immediately people are like, oh, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. Especially if you're an IT guy. You need a decent website, mm -hmm. okay? So a website, um, we do some SEO on the website. You know, you type in IT support Orlando. You know, you're, okay. you're gonna, we're going to eventually show up. We're not going to always be <laughs> people, but we're going to show yeah. up on there. But really, uh, warm referrals and your reputation is the biggest uh, mm -hmm. way for customers. And I, I'm involved in three different leads groups. I go to one every Wednesday. I go to one every um every Thursday and I go to one, uh, once a month. Okay. Wow. And these are all business to business only lead scripts. Okay. Yeah. There, there's an, there's an insurance guy in there that just does business insurance. There's, you mm -hmm. know, a, a, a general contractor that only does businesses. There's a lady that sells furniture just to businesses. Those are the people mm -hmm. you want the guys, those copiers. Those are the people yeah. that you want to network with because they're, they're in the same space as you want to be in. Yep. Be very generous about giving leads because you will get, if you give, but if you just come mm -hmm. in there and try to soak leads of everybody else and you're not willing to give, just don't waste your time. Don't go. Yeah. Okay? But I would say that's one of the most valuable ways to get business. And also, if you live in a small town or a medium-sized town, find, go to where, where one of your customers is, print up a bunch of flyers about your company, just one page, you know, whatever, free network mm -hmm. analysis, free cybersecurity analysis, whatever, and go a several block radius about around one of your clients. And say, hey, we're in this area. We have a client right around the corner. We're over here all the time. Love, yeah. love, love to meet with you. I consult with a guy that's one of my consultees in California. They're starting, a, uh, starting their company up. He's the IT mm -hmm. guy. His mom helps him with the billing. His dad helps him. His dad's retired. He helps him out a little bit. I said, have your dad go out and just pass out flyers like crazy, okay, in their whole yeah. town they live in. Dad goes out and does it for two weeks. He just signed a $3,300 a month contract with a company yesterday. His dad did it for wow. two weeks. That's it. <laughs> Found a couple, walk out the door. Yeah, our IT is horrible. Come in here right now. Son goes down there, signs a contract with them the, almost the first day he walked in the door. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, the dad was out there for two weeks, made $3,300 a month contract. Okay? So That's awesome. People have to know who you are. Chambers of Commerce, leads groups, make sure you have a good mm -hmm. website, um, cold calling. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do. But, um, you know, a small business, you have to spend that time reaching out. And you cannot spend all your time in your office fiddling with the next shiny object that you see you have to or get try to do it trying to gain the seo and all that type of stuff you gotta absolutely. get out there and meet people <laughs> absolutely when i first started literally my very first client right next door there was a law firm okay and every day i walked past the door of that law firm and one day i said you know what i'm gonna put on my best suit and i'm gonna walk in there one day okay it's a great little story about how you can grow your business okay now I, I, I was like you know i don't even know I, all i know is they have probably a few computers there that's all i know okay i walked yeah. in the door i walked up to the receptionist and uh, I said, hey, my name is Tim Taylor. I do the IT at the place next door. You know, this was 99, when before high-speed internet, you know, when the IT guy just didn't show up was always a challenge. Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I said, I do, the, I do the IT right next door. I said, you know, I know you guys have a bunch of computers in here. You know, I'm sure you have needs periodically. But I said, I'm over here all the time. And so she walks around the corner, and I could tell she was talking to the office manager. And she comes back in about 30 seconds. She said, well, we have somebody. You know, thanks for coming by. But I knew the office manager could hear me. So I just kept talking. I said, well, I'm over here all the time. And, uh, you know, I know you guys probably have some issues. I brought my voice up a little bit. I know you guys probably have some issues. And then uh, after about a minute, the, the office manager looked around the corner. And, um, and then she walked out. She said, well, let's go outside and talk. We walked outside. And she, for the next 45 minutes, all she did was talk about all the problems they had. 40, yeah. She just said, we're fine. We got a guy. 45 minutes of problems. They had no internet connection. They couldn't even email outside the office. Computers were having problems all the time. They, there's, mm -hmm. there's an expensive laser printer over in the corner. Half the people can't even print to it. The guy said, it's impossible. <laughs> really? Okay. So, you know, I said, I can fix every one of those things. Okay. I came in and got their business and uh, I helped them grow from eight machines to 50 over the next like four wow. years. Okay. Now he's one of the biggest attorneys in Orlando. All right. So mm -hmm. basically, I got the business because I went after it. 
You know, if you have a client in a building or a business complex, go to every business in there and tell them I do yeah. so-and-so right around the corner. It's a great mm -hmm. way to get your business expanded. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the other things too, and a couple of, you know, the examples you provided, you know, you talk about, you know, how you've helped them grow their business. I mean, right. you know, maybe you weren't the sole person responsible for it, but you were definitely right. one of the, one of the reasons why they were able to, you know, use technology, help right. them grow their business, have right. better profits, all those right. types of things. So, right. and, and I think that's something that we need to, you know, constantly remember is that the more successful the customers are, the more successful you are. And I, and I tell customers all the time, I said, look, when you succeed, I succeed. I want you to stay yeah. in business. You know what I mean? I want you to grow. I want you to buy more managed services because you've got more computers. You know, I want their network to work so well that they're never limited in growing or expanding because of their network. You know, mm -hmm. in the old days, people say, well, I can only add 10 machines to this network. I mean, we're talking the really old days. That's all the employees I can add. I can only put 10 machines on here. <laughs> no, we can put hundreds of machines on there. You know, I mean, you know, if they have the right software, I mean, think about a company yeah. that's a good product, that they have good employees, they, and their network runs great, their software runs, everything works. I mean, you know, if you have 25 employees and it, they just make $20 an hour, if each of them spends five minutes a day screwing around with something, that's $600 a month that they waste. Yeah. $600 a month. You can use that when you're selling people. So listen, if your people spend five minutes a day fiddling with their computer because it's not working right, it's going to be more money than you're going to pay me. <laughs> okay? Seriously. Yep. You know, so I mean, $600 a month if they spend five minutes a day, just 25 employees making $20 an hour, okay? So add that up. So that's a great yeah. way to sell your services. But yeah, you want your customers to run so well that they can't help but grow and be successful. And, and you're an integral part of that. I mean, mm -hmm. the IT is, I, I often say, you, you know, you're, you're in their underwear. I mean, you, you are inside, <laughs> their you know their business, you know what I mean? You, 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 you're intimately connected with that company when you do IT. And, yeah. um, and you can help them grow, you know? So that's what I try and do with our customers. Okay, great. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, you know, when you think about, you know, what you've done over the last 20 years, you know, what do you think is the best part of being in this business, of, of being MSP solution provider? Yeah, that's provider? a great question. Um, well, I think... I mean, being, one of the best parts of being a business owner is, is you do have some freedom, okay? You do have some mm -hmm. freedom. However, it's really funny when people go, oh, go, you know, be your own boss. You know, you got all this freedom. It's exactly the opposite. You suddenly now have 100 bosses because they're called your customers. You know what I mean? You yeah. have to be the place that. Okay? <laughs> well, I, I like, um, I love it when I go in a place and, you know, especially if I get a compliment on one of my employees. You know what I mean? If I go in a place and say, mm -hmm. oh, we love. Jared, one of your technicians, he's just so great. Every time that we, he does something for us, he's just phenomenal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, no boss, look, you know, hates hearing that. Everyone, we all love that, you know, because that's a reflection yeah. of you that you hired a good person, you know. And one of the other things about being an MSP is it's a growing field. I mean, you know, when the cloud came out mm -hmm. a few years ago, everybody was scared. Oh, it's a bad time to be an MSP. Everything's moving to the cloud. <laughs> that's bull. That's bull. Autotask and ConnectWise were just bought by major investors. Yep. Major people that are spending major money on those mm -hmm. two products. By the way, we moved from ConnectWise to Autotask a year ago. Okay, if you ever want to talk about that, no. out. <laughs> but anyway, auto, great products. So both of them are great products. And there's other yeah. ones out there, solar ones, other ones that are great products. But anyway, major investors are looking at this market going, my God, this is worth investing in. So the mm -hmm. MSP market, the last statement I make in my book is that small businesses will always outsource their IT. Okay, always. They will always yeah. outsource their IT and they want to outsource it to another small business. They do not. That's why IBM, Dell, uh, AT&T, all these other companies have never made inroads in the MSP market. And there's mm -hmm. a reason for that is because that small business owner, he wants to look across the table at me and he wants to say, it's going to hurt you to lose my business. So I want yeah. you to work hard to keep it. Yeah. And if you call, you can, you know, Dell and some other places, they do offer managed services. But no small business owner wants to call Dell and go through four levels of people before he gets a technician. Yep. And every time he calls, he gets a different technician. Okay? Yep. There is no way. They want, they want that small business owners. And I'm going to show you something. My business card right here has got my cell number on it. Okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Every single person at every single computer that we support has got my cell number. Okay. All Every right. business owner has got my card in his pocket and he can call me if he wants to. Now, do I get a lot of phone calls? No, I don't get a lot of phone calls because mm -hmm. they know to call my help desk, stuff like that. But if the business owner knows he can call me when he wants to, you know what I mean? That's, that's just freedom to him. 
To have my card yeah. in his pocket is freedom. Okay. So I just, what I really love is helping these businesses and, and them succeeding and growing. And I love being just a, you know, employer to my employees. They can drive me crazy sometimes, but I mean, <laughs> I'm feeding 35 people between yeah. my employees and their, and their families. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think about that yeah. every day, you know, and I, 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 um, and as a business owner too, when you get a little bigger and start making some money, you have freedom to do things. My, my wife and I travel around the country when I do speaking engagements and things like that. Um, Great. They, uh, she gets to go with me and, you know, she hates going to the computer meetings. She goes to shopping and spending my money while I'm in there, you know, giving a talk. But, you know, yeah. there, there's some freedom there. Now, there won't be freedom in the first few years. You know, I worked five, six years, you know, with just one yeah. employee, me and that employee. And I used to have to literally mm -hmm. look at my calendar the next day and figure out how many hours of sleep I would have to have to be able to do all these appointments tomorrow. You know what I mean? I didn't even start my company until I was 40 years old. So yeah. the energy level it takes to run a company like this, you know, it can be pretty extensive when you're the technician and the boss and the, you yeah. know, do everything. So um, you seem like you, you seem like you still have the, all that energy though. I, I know. Just I an know. observation. I know. And I, talk, <laughs> I talk fast. I'm, I am from Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee, but I talk like I'm from New York City. I agree. I agree. And I do have a lot of that's just naturally the way I'm made. My grandfather died in '93, and he was still blowing and going like crazy until he died. So um, basically. Yeah, I mean, just there, there's great freedom in being in an industry that's not dying, it's growing. Okay, yeah. I, I really like that. And, you know, my son just came to work for us. You know, my daughter's worked here part time when she was in college. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, both my sons are actually working with me now. So, basically, um, you know, you, it can be a great, great field to be in. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one thing you, you mentioned about you and your wife traveling around to shows, one of the things I've noticed, you know, because I came kind of from the corporate, you know, enterprise software side right. of things and those kinds of conferences. Right. And then coming into MSP and going to MSP conferences, you actually see a lot of husband and wife teams. Oh yeah! Oh, know, absolutely! Out there, and it's, and, and, and it, yeah. My wife was my administrator when I first started. She was my main. Yeah. You know, she paid the bills, and you know, she uh, uh, get this. When I started in 1990, I had a pager. I didn't even have a cell phone. <laughs> 1999. Okay, yeah. and they would call the, the office. And then she would page me their number or my, I, most of my clients, I just gave them my pager number. I said, here's my number, you know, page me with your number. And then if it's a real emergency, put 911 at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. She was my main administrator until we, and I worked out of my bedroom until I outgrew mm -hmm. her, you know, and her ability yeah. to keep up with it. And so, um, uh, but yeah, there, there are a lot of husband and wife teams. I would say that one of the best things you can do as an MSP is go to conferences. And, you know, they're not always cheap. But I'm speaking at a yeah. great conference in, in Chicago at the end of April, the, um, the uh, ITO Compass, ITO Compass Conference in Chicago, um, mm -hmm. 24th, 25th of, of, of April. But I mean, it's a great conference. Check it out, itocompass.com. Um, but they're excellent. You got, everybody you're going to meet there is going to be just like you. That's what the great thing about it. And you can walk yeah. up and say, hey, I've got this issue. How did you handle this? Or you, you're in a booth looking at a product and you walk away and go, talk to another guy and say, Hey, do you, did you own that? How did, how does it work for you? And you mm -hmm. get to talk to some great, you know, people that are selling products. You know, you can see a lot of good products and, but, but the best thing is just talking to people around your table, you know, about this, yeah. that, and the other, you're going to talk to guys that their companies 10 times bigger than yours. And you're going to talk mm -hmm. to guys that are just getting started and you've been going for a while, you know, so I love yeah. that. And you'll make great yeah. relationships and, and, um, you know, you can literally go to a conference a month if you wanted to. There's a lot of them. <laughs> but, um, well, well, I do, but not yeah. for the same reasons that you do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I've been speaking to a few of them, and I've been on the road for um, so, so, uh, for Dado and some other people doing some uh, some yeah. coffee. But I mean, there's uh, there's great Cloudberry is a great product. There's great products out there, and so um, there's there's always great information. Just don't go to too many conferences. Go to the ones yeah. you can afford to go to. But I mean, exactly. uh, there's always conferences in your area if you just look around. And a lot of the products that you use, the people uh, do lunch and learns and things like that. So mm -hmm. watch for those products and watch for those things. And those are great places to get good, good free information. Okay. So are you, are you ready? Are you ready for our rapid fire round? Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is easy. It's just six questions. Okay. Answer it as quick as you can. All right. And uh, we'll go from there. So first up, Apple or Android? Android. Okay. Mac, Linux, or Windows? Windows. Amazon, Azure, or something else? Something else. Okay. What we're getting into. Local back. Okay. Uh, local backups, cloud, or both? Both. Absolutely. Okay. Should you always virtualize? If if it makes sense. If it makes sense, mm -hmm. yeah. Try to if it makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then go back to 1999. Think about this one. Uh, 
Which is worse, printer support or vendor cold calls? <laughs> oh, I would have to say printer support. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's better than it was. Printers are more reliable, but oh, printer support, yeah. 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 It's good number of calls. I don't mind. <laughs> I talk to them. They're okay. It's, like I said, it's about 50-50 on that one. So. <laughs> It, was, it used to be um, much worse, my friends. Let me tell you. Yeah. The pin fed dot matrix days. Oh, my God. It was a lot of fun back then. <laughs> well, yeah. So when I, yeah, I, was at, I worked in the computer labs in college, and we had those beast um, HP laser jets that oh, just would print a million pages and oh, yeah, have a breakdown. Yeah. yeah. Those were Absolutely. the best. Yeah. And I, I worked on the They don't make those anymore. <laughs> yeah. You haven't lived until you've worked on the mainframe. Uh, it was a line printer. They print an entire mm -hmm. line, you know, code at one time. The big green bar paper, remember the green bar? Yep. Paper? yep Those yep. things were fast, man. They could whip through, but it's all uppercase. <laughs> but they could whip through a box of paper in no time. It was amazing. So uh, yeah, I've worked on a few of those. So yep. great, Tim. Before we leave, any other um, advice, tips, and tricks you have for the audience? Well, I would say being an MSP is a is a privilege. Uh, I would say read up everything on it. Uh, don't try a lot of different products that you don't need. Don't change mm -hmm. your products all the time. Find a good backup system. Find a good, um, uh, you know, PSA, uh, RMM yep. tool, a good antivirus, and a and, uh, good remote connection tool, whatever. Stick with those products. Uh, get to know them really, really well, especially your PSA. And, uh, and then get help when you need it. Gosh, guys, I, I'm a consultant, guys. Yep. I help MSPs all the time. You're not the Lone Ranger. You're not the first person to do this. Uh, yep. I have always had a consultant helping me since 2008. And, okay. Uh, there are good consultants out there. They're not ridiculously expensive. Some of them, were, even if you're a sole proprietor, uh, they will help you. So I would say get okay. the help when you need it, and you can have a fantastic business. Great. Thank you very much. It's been great. Um, and again, you know, I'll include all the links in the show notes. And right. uh, great talking with you. All right. Thanks. I really enjoyed being on.